Hello, I'm Professor Matthew Rotella, and in this tutorial I am going to go over lighting using a Skydome light, which is a super powerful tool. Skydome lights are a great way uh, to get a lot of variety and, and subtlety out of your light setup uh, without putting in a whole lot of effort. Uh, you can get some really great results really easily. Uh, so it's a super powerful tool and a lot of times it can be a good foundation for any lighting setup that you do and then you can sort of uh, use the skydome light as a base and then build upon that with further accents that you can put in manually yourself with area lights or spotlights or whatever makes you happy but uh to create one uh, i'm gonna go to my arnold tab because for the purposes of this tutorial i'll just be using arnold and i can go to lights and then Skydome light, and it'll drop in this big dome into your scene. Uh, which, if you want to change the size of it, you can by going to viewport, and then the sky radius is here. But I'm just going to leave it as is. As for the rest of my setup, it's pretty straightforward. I have uh, some table geometry. Uh, I just have a tabletop, and then I have this tea can that I modeled in previous tutorials and I have my textures set up for both and all right so now we can get to lighting it with the skydome light so by default it's going to be all white it's going to be an all white dome and I have all my renders done ahead of time but uh, what it's going to look like is well uh, is this it's just going to be or not that what's going to look like is this it's just going to be an all white dome which you can see just yeah like I said all white back here which uh, this is not a very good result at all um, like the lighting is super flat there's no contrast uh, you're, you're not really getting all that much out of your reflections and that sort of thing uh, so really in order to make the most of this tool in order to use it for what it's for you have to put an image on it now uh, what you want to look for in an image uh, to put on a Skydome light is you want to look for a uh, high dynamic range format. Uh, so either an HDR image or an EXR image or something of similar caliber. Now, a good place to source those, which I'll put links to these in the description, is uh, this website, the SIBL Archives, has all sorts of things that you can pick from, uh, as well as these, which are good for placing on things like area lights and the like, but more this type of uh, dome or things, or, uh, yeah, but more like these kinds of things, which will give you what are called lat-long images that look like this these like distorted views of entire rooms uh, but yeah I like to use the SIBL archive or HDRI Haven both uh, have excellent HDRs that are free and are of high quality uh, all of them I think are in at least 2k and uh, have options for higher if you need but basically the reason why you want an HDR image, uh, whether that be again a dot .HDR or an EXR or the like, is because these contain the most uh, image information that you can use to get, uh, that you can use for your light setups. Uh, and what I mean by that is they have extended ranges. Uh, so uh, they can store values that are uh, lower than zero, which zero in an image would normally appear as black, and higher than one, which one in an image would normally appear as white, uh, which uh, would be our case up here, where like I can sample it, and uh, and I can get that RGB of all one, but it's actually there's still image information there if I bring it down low enough, and you can see that I still have all of that pixel data and the subtlety and similarly I can bring information out of what was appear uh, previously appearing as black 
And all of that will appear in your lighting uh, when you go to use this image in Maya. Similarly, uh, by default, this Brooklyn Bridge, uh, like all of this looks super blown out, but I'm able to adjust the exposure and bring more of that detail back. Now, of course, if I take the exposure down, that'll make my light darker in Maya. But you can just drop this in as is, and everything will be fine. And Maya is able to sort of interpolate uh, uh, this, like all of that subtlety on its own. You don't need to do it for it. But I'll show you how to adjust your exposure in Maya also. But basically, once you put this image onto your Skydome light, which the process of doing so is pretty straightforward. Uh, here in my color, I'll just go to click on this checker box to bring up this. Then I'll select file, and then I will select the file that I want. In this case, I'll use the this Art Studio HDR, which I think I got from HDRI Haven, and hit open. And now, when I render this, what previously looked like this with just the white dome now looks like this and you can see that art, uh, the, the art studio image in the background here and you can see all these subtleties that we're getting in the reflections and things like that and then similarly here I use this apartment HDR this guy right here and you can see all of that detail getting reflected in my lighting and in my materials. Here it's that photo studio that I had here with that has like the cyclorama and the, the three-point lighting setup and so on and so forth. The Brooklyn Bridge image and then here is just a, a shady spot in the park here in a uh, Bryant Park here, and all right, oh, yeah, and that's basically all there is to that. Now this format is called lat long, uh, which is gone over in the Skydome Light settings, which I highly recommend looking through the documentation, which I'll give a link to the documentation in the description. Uh, but you can see this lat long format, which all of this is usually captured from a chrome ball, uh, which, and then uh, sort of unwrapped from the chrome ball into this lat long format, which uh, when mapped to your sphere in Maya, sort of undistorts itself, which is the whole point of taking an image using this technique. And uh, but you can also just use a mirror ball image straight up if you uh, crop it to do so. And you can change that right here under the format drop down in uh, your Skydome light. But another thing to be aware of is this resolution here on your Skydome light. You want to have this resolution match that of the HDR that you're using, which. Uh, if I come in here into Photoshop, I can see my readout right down here it says it's 2K 2048. So that's the resolution that I'm going to want to type in to my Skydome light 2048 when I go to use it. Uh, you can adjust uh, exposure here and you can also go here and go into your color balance and adjust the exposure on your image, which you can sort of see that same sort of effect that I was happening that I was demonstrating in Photoshop happening here in Maya as well, uh, where things look blown out, but I can get that detail back. Not that the detail was. Uh, gone before, but you can adjust it to uh, show through in different ways. And that will dynamically change how your light looks in Maya based off of your HDR. And then 
lastly, uh, which you don't want to have the resolution go higher than this, like I said, uh, you might notice noise uh, coming from your light, uh, upping the samples on your light. Usually I want to have it at least three when I'm doing a render, but I'll often go uh, five or more if I'm doing uh, professional work. And if you still see noise, even once you start upping your samples to things like five, uh, that's uh, you can further reduce your noise by upping your samples on your diffuse or your specular or whatever is causing the noise. For example, uh, I have a decent amount of noise on this side of, uh, of my T-can here that's uh, likely caused from my indirect specular getting reflected and uh, so I would need to up my specular samples. It uh, could also be my diffuse samples. It would be one or the other in this case. But upping that should resolve the noise. But of course increases your render times. Uh, but lastly, what I want to point out is uh, I'm sure you noticed that the, the Skydome light is rendering in my scene. So if I were to look at this and if I just do a render and I'll just stop it early, you see that it's rendering in my scene and I don't have any transparency with this render. If I want to render without seeing my Skydome light, what I do is in my Skydome light settings, I can go down to visibility and I can limit its visibility in any part of my shader, like if I didn't want it to show up in my diffuse, but I still want it to show up in my specular reflections, I could uh, like turn my diffuse off, but that's not what I want. All I want to do is just make it so it renders with transparency back here, in which case all you have to do is change this camera slider to zero, which again, all I did was change the camera slider to zero under visibility, and then when I render it'll render with full visibility back there, uh, which, again, I rendered one ahead of time. You can see that this right here is rendered and still has that transparency back there, which that would be uh, this one, which is in the Bryant Park HDR, but then here it is the same, but with that transparency because I turned that slider down. And um, that's basically all that you ought need to know about uh, the Skydome Light. Yeah, super powerful tool, uh, which again, if you have a Chrome ball, you can take your own photographs and uh, you would want to take them uh, from the raw format uh, using uh, uh, it, uh, the, ideally taken with some sort of DSLR or other professional quality camera and you would want to use your raw image as opposed to like a JPEG or a PNG because you want to have those extended range values and uh, yeah so you can use your own crowball photos uh, to take any uh, location from the real world and translate it into a lighting setup in Maya using the uh, Skydome light and uh... And again, I highly recommend looking through the documentation to learn more about different things and uh, uh, with using the light. But that's, the, that's it for the general overview. Hope that was helpful. Uh, yeah, super powerful tool. And uh, yeah, hope you have a good day, good night, uh, good life, what have you. <laughs>